Unlike most programming languages, Java has been hyped and discussed in the press and has acquired an odd kind of image in some ways. Let me tell you just what Java really is. Java is a general purpose programming language. In this regard, it's just like C, C++, Pascal, COBOL, Fortran, and any number of others. It's for writing programs, any kind of programs. Sure, it has some special purposes, such as writing embedded programs for cell phones, microwave ovens, and VCRs, but these are just specific applications of the same general purpose language. It can be used to produce animated applets that dance around in a web browser, and we're going to be doing that in just a little while, but that's just another application of Java as a general purpose language. Any program that can be written in any language can also be written in Java. Other general purpose languages may be more or less suitable than Java for a specific application, but there's nothing inherently included as part of the Java to prevent you from writing any program you like. Java is a simple language. By this, I mean the syntax of the language is very straightforward, and once you learn it, you can look at any Java statement and tell exactly what it's doing. Whenever you see a minus sign, for example, you know that one number is being subtracted from another. There are only a very few fundamental data types and very few Java keywords to manipulate them. Java programs are generally simple in the sense that they are written as a collection of small methods. A method is a named collection of executable commands. We'll be getting to that very soon. Java is scalable because it can be used for everything from embedded chips and portable devices to programs that run on mainframe computers and manage networks. This is really a function of it being a general purpose language, but Java scales better than uh, many other general purpose languages. Java is an object-oriented programming language. It is so object-oriented that you can't help but write a Java program in terms of objects. If you have no prior programming experience, then you'll have no problem with this concept because you won't have any preconceived notions of what objects are. If you have some experience with another language, you'll find that things operate about the same in Java as they do in other object-oriented languages, but you must be very careful about some of the terminology. For example, the terms interface and property have special meanings in Java that can be entirely different from the meanings in other languages. I'll define every term as we come across it, but watch out for words that have different meanings because it can cause you a good deal of confusion. I know, I've been there. To make it sneakier, most of the words mean exactly the same for all programming languages, so you'll tend to assume they all mean the same things, but they don't. Java was based on C. That is, the syntax and general structure of C was used as the basis for the design of Java. The overall structure is different because of the objects, but almost every executable statement in Java could be included in a C program and would compile and run just fine. Now don't worry, you don't have to know C to take this course. But I needed to mention that for the people that already know C, because if you do, you're going to feel quite at home in certain places. If you have programming experience in C++, be prepared for a departure from what you know. Some of the words and syntax are going to be familiar, but be prepared for slightly different meanings. When Java first appeared on the scene, the hype was resounding everywhere. With all the rumors that were translated into facts by magazines and whatnot, it was hard to tell exactly what Java was. Now, the most absurd of these rumors have disappeared. Everybody pretty much knows that Java is not a kind of computer or a kind of terminal, but some other misconceptions still wander around. Java is not JavaScript. These are two entirely different languages. JavaScript is an extension of HTML and can be included in an HTML web page to do things like prompt for input from the user and display graphics and such. While it is true that Java can also do this, the process for doing so is quite different. Java is not an operating system. It does run inside a Java virtual machine, which is nothing more than a program that runs like any other program. We'll be talking about the virtual machine later. There was some talk at one time about an operating system that would run Java in its native mode, but nothing ever came of it. It's possible to do, but it's never been done. Java is not just for use on the Internet. 
It does a lot of work on the internet on both the server and client side, but these are really only special applications of a general purpose programming language. Java is not a tiny language. Now this may sound like it contradicts my earlier statement that Java is simple, but I don't mean for it to. Java comes with an enormous library of classes that you can include as part of your program. For just about anything you can think of that you'd like to do, Java has a class that will either do it or help you do it. These classes don't clutter up the language. You can still write your own classes to do things the way you'd like to have them done, but this huge library of classes is available as a standard part of Java if you decide you want to use it.